How often do you think about the Roman Empire? How often do you, do you feel like you think about the Roman Empire? How often do you think about the Roman Empire? How often do you think about the Roman Empire? How often do you think about the Roman Empire? My answer is whenever I see a straight road. Straight road. Today, we live in a world invented by the ancient Romans. Just imagine that all the basic concepts and principles of modern laws emerged when gladiators fought to the death in the Colosseum. The ancient Romans considered the profession of lawyer prestigious, knew how to divide inheritance in court, and laid the foundation for contractual obligations. For over 2,000 years, we have only been refining the ideas formulated before the birth of Christ. Until he came, Mickey Mouse. It was this eared mouse that challenged the US Constitution. We're talking about copyright, the foundation of the modern economy. Remember the famous Mona Lisa smile? In the 16th century, different artists copied it a dozen times. The Romans even considered the owner of the material on which it was written to be the owner of the poem. Parchment or boards were much more expensive than words. Until the fight for the image of Mickey Mouse, copyright didn't have such a significant impact on the world economy. Why? Because experts value the image of the cheerful mouse at $3 billion. That's more than the budget of the European Republic of San Marino, the Dominican Republic, or the Solomon Islands. Of course, there was something to fight for. Initially, the rights to draw Mickey Mouse in movies, on souvenirs, or put him in Happy Meals belonged to Walt Disney himself. And after his death, they could remain in the hands of his heirs for 50 years. Further, the eared treasure was supposed to become public domain. But you understand that Disney's heirs didn't want to let go of such wealth. What is that? Therefore, in 1998, lobbyists from Walt Disney Studios were able to pass the Sonny Bono Act, more often called the Mickey Mouse Protection Act. Under it, the term of copyright on old works was extended for another 20 years. The studio's lawyers were even trying to pass a law on perpetual copyright. But this directly contradicts the US Constitution. Therefore, the lawyers came to such a compromise. Whatever it may be, Mickey Mouse lost his status in 2024 and became public domain. Does this mean you can now print and sell his image on t-shirts? Yes and no. The copyright term expired only on the very first cartoon, Plain Crazy. Now it can be shown and even resold without the studio's permission. However, it's not that simple. In 2007, Walt Disney Studios registered the short film with Mickey Mouse as a logo. It sounds strange, but it works. Mickey Mouse is almost 100 years old, but the right to use him is still being disputed with lawyers resorting to dubious tactics and searching for loopholes in the law. But in the last decade, the world of intellectual property has undergone a revolution that dwarfs the entire history of legal battles over Disney's legacy. Artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence. AI. AIs can now drive cars manage energy grids, and even invent new molecules. And the current legal system, having never fully understood the drawn mouse, found itself completely unprepared for this new challenge. Neural networks that generate texts and images, autopilots and Tesla cars, military drones with artificial intelligence, what unites them? The imperfection of the laws that try to regulate them. Lawmakers are too conservative and cautious therefore slow to react to the challenges of new technologies. Take a look. On March the 13th, 523 members of the European Parliament voted for the world's first comprehensive law on artificial intelligence. The EU AI Act is quite similar to the General Data Protection Regulation, which was adopted back in 2016. Just like the GDPR, the EU AI Act has extraterritorial reach meaning that companies outside of the EU will also need to be in compliance with it in certain cases. In both cases, the strictness of the regulatory requirements are directly related to the impact on the rights and freedoms of ordinary people. The EU AI Act introduces the concept of prohibited artificial intelligence systems. They are so dangerous that, according to the law, they cannot be introduced to the European market. 
For example, this includes systems capable of manipulating human behavior in such a way that it will harm them. Target used data to send personalized discounts to customers, boosting conversions dramatically. These algorithms gained widespread notoriety when coupons for baby clothes ended up in the hands of a high school student's father. The unsuspecting man had a heated argument with the store manager, accusing them of using advertising to promote teenage pregnancies. Sadly, he didn't know his daughter had received personalized discounts precisely because she was already pregnant. Doesn't this remind you of ad targeting? Does this mean that under the EU AI Act, Google and Facebook can no longer be used in Europe? Not yet. They are not on the list of such systems. But who knows? They might be added tomorrow. Look what's happening with TikTok in the US right now. Netflix algorithms are another good example. What if you're depressed and keep being recommended films filled with hopelessness? Could a simple recommendation system lead to suicide? By the way, according to the authors of the AI Act, algorithms for creating social ratings are considered prohibited systems. However, in China, the social credit system is flourishing. We have a video about social ratings. Check it out to see how it all began. High-risk systems are those that despite the high risk it can present to individuals' rights, they can still operate in the union market, provided they follow the compliance requirements established by the Act. However, this raises ethical concerns. Could Chinese shop owners in Brussels offer discounts based on a customer's Chinese social rating? What about online stores? In the spirit of the law, this would be discrimination. However, in reality, Perhaps no one could stop them from implementing such a discount system. Additionally, HR departments are increasingly using AI to analyze candidate data. The EU considers these systems high risk and requires registration, human rights impact assessments and more. The European Commission can update the list of high risk systems at any moment, and that could bring some legal challenges. Finally, the third class of AI systems consists of those with moderate risk, from text chats to automated graphic editors. If you need to replace the background in a photo, you can use AI without any problems, but only if the system is transparent, registered in the registry, and so on. But let's go back for a moment to where we started, with Mickey Mouse. Remember, the rights to him belongs to Disney, although the artist and animator of Playing Crazy the first animated film about the mouse's adventures, was Ub Iwerks. It was he who refined and brought to the screen Disney's initial sketch. As Iwerks was a salaried employee of the studio, the rights to his work passed to Disney himself. Have you ever wondered who owns the rights to the texts and images created by neural networks? Chinese lawyers have already encountered such a precedent. For residents of this country, the company Tencent means the same as Facebook or YouTube for us. It is no surprise that the tech giant has long been using artificial intelligence to simplify routine tasks. Since 2015, one of the company's news portals has been publishing stock market reviews generated by a neural network. In 2018, one of these articles was copied by authors from another Chinese company. They, in good faith, indicated the author of the text. Tencent's robot dreamwriter, but this didn't help. Tencent sued the plagiarists and Chinese lawyers sided with them. Since the article contained original wording, the judge recognized it as copyrighted work protected by law. According to his decision, the rights to this article belong to the neural network's employer, that is, Tencent. The losing party paid as much as $217, but more importantly, created an interesting precedent. US lawyers disagree with the opinion of their Chinese counterparts. This was encountered in 2023 by digital artist Ankit Sani. He uploaded a photo of a setting sun to the Ragav app and then used an AI filter to get a picture in the style of Van Gogh. Ankit tried to register the resulting image with the US Copyright Office. 
To protect a text or image with copyright, evidence is needed that a human, not artificial intelligence, is behind the creation. Copyright registration was denied. Live artists have struck back. Three young artists, Sarah Anderson, Kelly McKernan, and Carla Ortiz, filed a lawsuit against the creators of Stability AI, Deviant Art, and Midjourney. During training, AI creators used millions of images of real artists without their knowledge or consent. AI had just erased the humanity from it by reducing my life's work to an algorithm, said Sarah Anderson. This dispute has not yet been settled. Figuring out everything the AI Act covers isn't easy, and this video just gives you a quick overview. If you're curious and want to learn more, check out our second channel, SumSub for Experts. Natalia Fritzen, our AI compliance specialist, breaks it all down, specifically how AI laws in Europe stack up against those in China, the US and the UK. Whether you're working with AI or just curious about the legal side of things, these videos are packed with must-know info. Check out our expert channel, share your thoughts in the comments, and stick around for more. Now, let's get back to the main topic. Artificial intelligence has proven itself too intelligent to create competition for creative professions. For the first time in its history, humanity has created something capable of independently creating new works and making decisions that affect our well-being. As for lawyers, they are now venturing into the field of high technology. Who is the true author of a painting generated by a neural network? Who is to blame for an accident caused by autopilot? Artificial intelligence is only beginning to unveil its true potential. And the further we go, the faster it will develop. So maybe we should try to involve neural networks in developing laws about AI. Do you think they could handle it better than human lawyers?